Hey everyone, Dave the NC Picker here in my garage. It is Thursday night and I didn't really plan too well. I'll be honest with you. Uh, in regards to my day, my evening, things like that. Why is this thing pointed down? Uh, first of all, uh, we talked recently in a video about this L'Oreal stuff. Someone bought it and it said 2X L'Oreal Everpures and I only had one. So I emailed them and I said, hey, I only have one. Did you know that? I mean, the picture only shows one. Let me know if you want to cancel and they did cancel that order so i have to relist this as a 1x and see if we can sell it okay so i've got this crazy thing going on this can't be the best way to do this i need to ask kevin the commonwealth picker how he ships stickers but basically <laughs> i sold out of nc piggy stickers here they're all sold and a couple people picked up trash to cash stickers too and i wasn't sure how i was going to ship these i know i'd heard about like an envelope rate and some of you guys talked about it uh, this is on Big Cartel. I don't know if Big Cartel had the option. I guess I guess it's really a question of does Pirate Ship have an option? Which they might, they might not. It's kind of hard to say. I didn't see it. Like I went in and I tried to ship a piggy sticker and I saw an option for first class, but nothing cheaper. So since I couldn't figure out how to do it that way, I actually went out and got stamps and wrote down the address and stuff on every... Well, let's be clear. I didn't write them down. I asked my daughter if she wanted to earn some money and I paid her money to write down every single address of someone who ordered and our return address on each of these so that we could send these out and really i was just super busy last night annabelle was really excited to earn some extra money so it all worked out in the end okay so we've got a bunch to talk about we definitely need to talk a little bit about the response to my last video in regards to whatnot <laughs> it sounds like you're oh let's talk about this and that and whatnot but no literally the company is called whatnot i know i know it's crazy uh and we also have a bunch of ebay orders tina's been listing like a machine and someone put a comment it sounds like tina's doing all the work <laughs> She has been stepping up and doing a lot of work, and I'm really appreciative of Tina for doing that. Uh, she's also probably going to ship when I'm in Amsterdam next week, so that will be good. As far as content goes, while in Amsterdam, um, I'm not sure what I'm going to do. I might do at least an episode kind of over there. Uh, maybe I'll be able to find a thrift store or something. I don't even think they do garage sales. So I could probably just hop on and tell you what Tina shipped. I don't know. If you guys want to see, I could put a little bit of Amsterdam in there if you want to see that. Just let me know in the comments how you want me to deal with next week uh, i'll be doing work stuff speaking of that but yeah i'll be doing work stuff so i won't have a ton of time because it'll be a trade show and my contacts mess up sorry my contact lens just got all all weird on me uh, but yeah i you know i just finished my day job today it's like well i didn't even finish yet okay so it's like 6 15 and i just finished my last meeting on my day job but i've got another thing where i'm doing like a trainer training not a trainer a training uh tonight for my day job to, you know, people in Asia, right? Australia, New Zealand, uh, China, Japan, very different time zone, right? So I do the training at 8 p.m. Eastern. It's like 8 a.m. in China. So I have to train over there and that's from eight until 9.30 tonight. So I have this like small window. I just scarfed down dinner. It's now 6.15 where I got to pull 16 orders, record, ship, maybe edit. Edit's gonna have to take a back seat. Maybe this video comes out a little late, uh, but definitely need to get everything shipped and packed up, all the stickers packed up things like that. So that's kind of very short time to do it, but let's see how it goes. Simply Southern hat. This is a snapback. It's new. It's modern. It's not old or anything. And this sold to a viewer. This sold to Sandra. Thank you, Sandra. It said, Hey Dave, love watching your videos each morning when I start my eBay workday. Wanted to show my support. And since I was born and raised in South, this hat is perfect. Yeah, it's a cool hat. Simply Southern. For some reason, when I bought this, I thought this was like a great brand, but it's really not that amazing. I think Tina just likes it. Because, you know, she's from the South, too. But yeah, so let's talk a little bit. Like, Tina's been listing big stuff. She listed these steering wheels. And she listed this fiber optic Christmas tree, which is awesome. And uh, yeah, she's been listing some big stuff. I also published my video today where I bought all my NC piggies. So if you want to see that, go over to my NC Picker channel. And you can see me pick those up. Anyways, mixed feedback. I think the most important feedback on yesterday's video. Okay, first of all, there was a video that said uh, typical crap video. It literally said crap video. Uh, I don't know if it was like a joke or if they were just saying the video was crap and saying like everything, Davey screw everything up or something like that. I don't know. Anyways, it was fine, but I don't think it was a bad video. The whatnot video. I think it was a good video. And I'm gonna tell you why. First of all, I sold these elbow pads, military elbow pads with the tag. So like brand new condition. I've had them for a long time, so I wouldn't call them a bolo. They sold for 10 bucks, so not a great buy. Probably bought those two and a half years ago, so not a good buy. But I say it was a good video because a lot of people commented on the video saying they went into Whatnot and realized they also hadn't been paid for past orders. And a lot of people said, Dave, it's your fault. 
you know, you should have been checking the tracking and ensuring you got paid. And of course, everyone was saying that they always check and they always, uh, what do they call it? Ratify your books? No, that's not right. Uh, balance your books, whatever. And so they know when they're missing money. I sold this little Svorsky owl for way less than I thought. I feel like I comped this at the yard sale and it was comping out at 30. Um, that was like two months ago. Tina listed it for 12 and honestly, she's probably right. I probably comped it wrong at the yard sale. So it sold for 12 bucks. But yeah, so I mean, a lot of people were saying it's, it's Dave, it's all your fault. Sure, I can accept that it's my fault that I didn't get paid, kind of, <laughs> kind of. And we'll talk about that in a minute. But I do think it's good. I made the video that I talked about it, that I brought it to light because I don't know, a lot of people were saying, oh wow, I was missing a bunch of money down in the comments of that video. So there was a lot of people they were in the same situation where Whatnot was holding their money for stuff that had already been delivered a long time ago. So I sold this Mizuno glove. It almost looks like a child size. I don't know. It's pretty, eh, maybe it's not. It's black glove. I think it sold for 20. Tina just listed it. Yeah, that sold for 20 bucks. Well, not a bad sale. So yeah, a lot of people were saying, Dave, you know, you're at fault because you didn't check. You didn't scan your item. You didn't go to the post office and actually scan it. Even Harold Tormato commented and said, hey, this is why I like to bring all my packages and get them scanned and watch them get scanned. And that's an awesome thing to do if you have this luxury of time where you can go down to the post office during post office hours and scan all your packages. I can't do that. Sorry. <laughs> I have a day job. And uh, I honestly like already feel like I asked too much of Tina for my little side project, but it is, it's our side project. But I, I don't know. She's incredibly busy with the kids all day, dropping them off at school, picking them up, doing errands, things like that. And the idea of sending her out to go scan every package, you know, wait in line at the USPS to scan every single package. I don't know, it just seems like a lot. So what do I do? I set up a post office pickup on my phone. I put the packages in my front porch and then the postman comes and he picks up the packages. And the vast majority of the time I hear him out there, I hear the little thing scanning, beep, 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 he's scanning the packages. Does he miss some? Yes. Is there sometimes a substitute that doesn't do them? Yes. But am I asking myself easy rhetorical questions? Yes. Why? Because it's fun. What else can I ask myself? What's your favorite candy, Dave? Well, I really like Haribo gummies, but they give you that weird saliva thing like after you eat them. You know what I'm talking about. Comment down below. I like a good Twizzler, but they're kind of boring too. Grape licorice, string grape licorice is the bomb. That's what you gotta get. Anyways, I sold this plush, My Little Pony. This is Anna's actually. That's just one of hers from her collection. She sold it for $8.79 to Donna. Donna, I always appreciate the plush buys. She bought, I think, a few more plush as well. So I'll grab those. And this was from uh, Anna, Donna, for $8.79. You also bought a plush from Eli. So he will also be excited. Let's see, FL64 is the Eli plush. So anyways, all that to say that I don't scan all my packages. I don't. Um, and so the whatnot thing was it didn't show confirmed delivered. And so they never paid me out in case you missed the last video. Basically last video, I talked through the fact that whatnot was withholding a bunch of my money on things I had auctioned off up to eight months ago, uh, November of last year, because they didn't show delivered and no customer complained. I've talked to many of the customers I sold that stuff to on Instagram and they all got what they needed, uh, what they ordered. So they got their items, things like that, but whatnot because there was no proof of delivery did not actually pay me out my money. And instead of like refunding the customer or anything, they just held on to the money. And that's where I think it gets weird. Okay, so a lot of people were saying, well, Dave, why would they pay you if it doesn't prove delivered? First of all, every other selling platform does, right? Even on Mercari, there's a time frame if it doesn't get delivered where they give you the money or they refund the customer the money, something like that. You have to do with something with money. You can't just keep it. And that's the thing that bothers me is what not just kept it. And not just from me, go look at the comments on the last video. A lot of people, oh yeah, wow, they had a bunch of my money too. Oh, wow. Wow, they had my money too. Oh wow, they had, you know what I mean? Like this was pretty consistent. And here's the thing, now that we know, you guys know, I know, when we do a whatnot auction, we'll go check and make sure everything gets paid out. And that's fine, but how many people are out there who haven't checked, don't know to check, maybe they see my video and they, they realize to check, but what if they don't see my video and they don't check and they have $2,000 in there? And I know a lot of you are gonna say, well, Dave, most people track their money better, but not everyone does. A lot of us ADD people have issues being organized and <laughs> cut us a break. It's hard for us. I think, in my opinion, what Whatnot should do, first of all, they should reach out to the seller and the buyer and say, okay, so the first step would be, hey, buyer, did you get your item, right? Buyer ignores you. Hey, seller, did you ship the item? You email them back, yes, we shipped the item. Maybe you wait 30 days. Then after 30 days, you say, okay, here's your money, seller. And you message the buyer, hey, we've paid so-and-so because, you know, you didn't say you didn't get the item, 
right? There's got to be a way for whatnot to send that money either back to the buyer or to the seller after a given set of time. It shouldn't be eight months later and whatnot's just keeping the money. That is the part that I don't like. There's ways to confirm whether or not someone got it. I know Mercari does like the whole review. Like once you review it, then the money gets paid out. There's that option and so on and so forth. So this is what Eli sold. Is that Eli now? No, it's Tina. Eli sold Peter Rabbit uh, from Dandy for $13.78. It's a cute plush. And additionally, okay, so let's talk about the scanning items because a lot of people were up in arms about the fact that I don't go get every item scanned. First off, okay, I have a day job. I work from like eight or 9 a.m. or 7 a.m., depending on when I start, but I'm never starting after nine. It's very rare that I even start that late. Usually it's earlier, usually it's eight-ish that I'm starting work. And when I start work, I work, I'm in meetings, I'm doing spreadsheets, things like that. Sometimes I get a lunch break, but usually it's not more than 20 minutes. Uh, that's about average for my lunch break, which isn't enough time to go all the way to the post office and wait in line and get everything scanned. And then I get back in meetings because I work with people on the West Coast and you know that's like when they're just getting started. So a lot of times, vast majority of the time, I have meetings from 12 to like five. And then the post office is closed. So it's just not an option for me. And there's times, you know, where I could potentially get Tina to go down there for me. But that's not consistent. That's not something reliable. Like, I don't know what her schedule holds any particular day, so I can't rely on that. And how many people out there are in my situation, oops, sorry about the camera angle, in my situation where they're doing this as a side hustle and they just don't have time to go to the post office because of their day job. It's just very common to not be able to get to the post office. So the whole like everyone getting up in arms and saying, Dave, you're an irresponsible seller if you don't get your packages scanned. I think that's ridiculous because it's just not possible for everyone to get their packages scanned all the time. I would love to, if I don't have a day job, I probably would do it. I probably go down to the post office every day, get everything scanned. One example, okay, just from one of those orders they didn't pay me out on, I took a look. It was an order, I think from like a couple months ago and I looked up the tracking and it was at the PO box. The item had been, del been delivered to the PO box, but not picked up and whatnot had not paid me out for that. Someone said in the comments that they had looked up their tracking numbers and stuff that said delivered hadn't gotten paid out by whatnot. So there's even more than that. You know, it's not just the sellers screwing up that would cause it. Donna also bought Star Trek Next Generation Motion Picture Collection. Great series of movies, $6.99. Which ones were on this? Oh yeah, Generations, First Contact, Insurrection, Nemesis. I didn't really like Generations, but the other three, because I'm not really into Kirk and all that. I know, I'm, I know, I know it's sacrilege. I'm sorry, guys. I just never watched those old ones. But really, I think most of the feedback was positive. Most of the feedback was, hey, you know, I really appreciate that you made this video, didn't hold anything back, told it like it is because it helps out other sellers, you know, realize the risks of selling on certain platforms. Now, mind you, I don't really think Whatnot's doing it nefariously. <laughs> Word of the day. Um, I don't think they're out there trying to swipe money from anyone. I really don't think that. But what I do think is that they're, you know, a new company. They probably don't have all the systems in place that would allow them to pay as close attention to things like this as they may want to. And so therefore some stuff gets missed. I think that's really all there is to it. Some stuff got missed uh, and that cost me some money, but it didn't really because like I said, when I talked to them, they paid it all out, uh, which is why I feel like it's not nefarious. Because I feel like Whatnot could have come back and they could have said, hey, there's no proof of delivery. The tracking never shows it was scanned or, you know, this one wasn't actually delivered we're not paying you. They could have done that. I mean, I feel like I would have gotten the money eventually, but that could have been a fight that happened. Earth, fire, water book, sold. Who wrote this? Margaret Weiss, just a paperback. I don't even know where I got that or why it's listed. Tina must have listed it. Hey, it was a pretty good one. Sold for $7.99. I don't even remember buying that. Might be a good book. I don't know. Donna said, good afternoon, Dave. Thank you for the deals. I enjoyed your whatnot video from earlier today. Unfortunately, a lot of businesses do that with your money. You have to remain financially aware of your money. That's true. I'm looking forward to your next video and I hope you have a safe trip. Take care, your loyal fan, Donna. Thank you, Donna. Yeah, no, I think, I think it just, you gotta be careful. You gotta be paying attention and I'm not always paying attention. That's just, you know, something that I struggle with mostly cause I'm super busy, but you know, there's no excuse. You gotta be responsible with your business, which I've been trying to do lately anyways, FL57. I today paid my quarterly taxes like a big boy. I was really proud of myself. Uh, except I was also a little sad to see the money leave, but I was also proud of myself that I actually did it because now hopefully I won't get penalties from the IRS like I got last year. So that was a step. That was a step. You know, I tried to be very productive today, even though my day job was, oh my, so much, so much going on at my day job today. But anyways, I sold this Gerber knife. This is just a, you know, typical Gerber knife. And it's pretty sharp. Looks like it's been sharpened recently. It sold for 
$9 plus shipping to James. I turned on a sale on my store. My sales were still kind of in the, in the pits, in the tubes, in the crapper, whatever you want to say. Sales were not doing well, so I was like, you know what? I'm going to just turn on a promo. I didn't want to promote my items and give eBay a bunch of money, so instead I made a coupon and I sent out like the email about the coupon. And it does seem to have increased my sales quite a bit uh, because after I did that, I think like 15 sales came in <laughs> and I was only at one. So definitely was worth doing. If I'm going to give money away, I'd rather give it to the buyer than to eBay with the whole promoted listing thing. So I sold this. this is Pocahontas and John Smith. It is a keepsake ornament and it sold to Zach. Zach said, well, you finally did it. Your YouTube channel. I watch your two. I watch your YouTube channel the most. Commonwealth Picker second. Harry Tornado might get watched, but I get behind on his. Carrie is my TikTok guy. I also watch full episodes of Trash Cash Podcast when they release. I have the sticker also. Keep up the great work. I got this from my wife. God bless Pastor Zachary, a.k.a. Side Hustle Preacher. Yes, I'm a pastor of a church and reseller videos coming soon to my YouTube. I do more TikToks. Thank you, Zach. Thank you. I appreciate the order. And Zach bought this ornament for $8, which is not bad. All right, it's time to come clean, guys. This is a, this is a moment for me. Every now and then... Ah, oh, my camera battery's gonna die, you'll never know. Is it working? Okay, I got a new battery. Every now and then, hold on. I was very embarrassed yesterday. I, I was, I was. I don't get embarrassed very easily, but I was a little embarrassed because every now and then, especially when I'm recording uh, the videos, I get stopped up in my nose, and my mouth, and I have to like snort to get like everything cleared out so I can talk normally again. Okay, and I've done this like since I was a kid when I was a kid I did it all the time nonstop where my brother used to punch me because I wouldn't stop But you know as an adult I don't do it very often But when I'm recording sometimes walking around talking nonstop not taking breath and my camera messed up again Anyways, every now and then I'll do this right and if I do it It's like a cough essentially it almost even sounds like a cough or a grunt and if I do it while I'm recording I'll just cut it out right because it's just a weird nose noise I made. And I'm like, yeah, no one wants to hear weird nose noises. Just like I cut off sneezes, I cut off coughing. I mean, I personally don't fart, but if I did, I'd cut that out too, right? These are the things that no one really wants to hear. Well, I left one in the last video and I got a bunch of people commenting saying, what's wrong with you? What's that noise you made? <laughs> it really wasn't the point of the video. The point of the video was to help save people money on whatnot. I did, I, I edited the video and removed it so everyone could calm down, but I'm sorry I forgot to cut it. It is a little embarrassing. Like it's like a bodily function that I sometimes have that's kind of like not something I really even control it just kind of happens because I've done it since I was a kid and I've heard other people do it like all the time my nephew does it all the time he's got nose sinus issues so he's constantly trying to get everything cleared out anyway so those of you who were asking what was that noise someone said it was like a grunt like Tim Allen stuff like that it's just a nose noise guys sorry I didn't cut it out <laughs> I feel judged though, I'll tell you that. A Steppenwolf 12 inch action figure sold for $13.99 plus shipping. Shipping? Shipping? I got this at the Goodwill. I even left the price tag on it, $1.99, if you can see it. This was when I went with uh, Callie the other other day. I got this for $1.99. Funny because uh, when I bought it, the lady at the Goodwill said, oh, there's the Ice King from like Game of Thrones. And I was like, I don't think that's the Ice King. But after looking it up, Tina found it was Steppenwolf. Speaking of Game of Thrones, by the way, which I know is not everyone's cup of tea, and it, I, I enjoyed some of the episodes, um, early seasons of it. Uh, it's a little bit adult, but the whole premise and the concept and the storytelling was quite good in the beginning. And uh, yeah, so they have a new show out and it's kind of boring and dumb. Well, let me get, it's called The House of the Dragons, I think. Let me know what you guys think of that. But yeah, I, so far I've watched two episodes and I'm like, yeah, this is not very good. But eh, maybe it'll get better. Oh, look, I got all these plush here. These like superhero plushes uh, and Oscar the Grouch and Sesame Street from AM Pickers. We were at, um, what's it called? Oh, and I wanna talk about something controversial too. I'm gonna give you guys a little sneak peek into it and get your opinion on it so I can show Kevin it's not a big deal because Kevin's worried. Office Home Suite, I think I paid five bucks for this, maybe 10, uh, but probably five. Sold it for 50 plus shipping, got it at the Highway 127 sale. I forgot what I was talking about. Hmm. The ADD sometimes, guys. Um, oh, AM Pickers got me the plush. That's what I was talking about. Thank you, AM Pickers. I appreciate that. That's right. It, okay, so I brought this topic. I do a podcast. Not everyone watches. That's fine. You don't have to watch. But it is something I do. I enjoy it. I've always listened to podcasts ever since, man, since they were around even. I was listening to podcasts a long time ago. And when I listen to podcasts, okay, this is going to be controversial. Some people are instantly going to get triggered when I say even this word. So I want to prepare you for the podcast. A lot of podcasts, people have something called a Patreon account. 
Now, a Patreon account is something you can use to have people support you if they so desire. And a lot of use, people use Patreon in ways that I wouldn't ever use it, but I was talking to Kevin and Carrie about this idea of using Patreon for our podcast. Because it doesn't really generate hardly any money for us uh, in ads or anything like that, because we don't want to put a bunch of ads in it on the YouTube channel, because it really breaks up the flow of a podcast. So I had this idea that we could do a Patreon, which would allow people to support us on a monthly basis and have like silly rewards for it, right? Not like, so a lot of people who do Patreon will put the content behind the paywall, right? And they'll say, hey, if you wanna to listen to this podcast, you have to subscribe to our Patreon and it's $5 a month and that's the only way you can listen to our podcast, right? A lot of people will do that. I wasn't thinking about that at all. That wasn't my idea. My idea was, hey, we have a Patreon, you know, as far as like benefits, it could benefit the channel. Like if we got enough people to sign up for that podcast Patreon, we could potentially remove all video ads from the channel uh, because, you know, we're not making that much. We're splitting it three ways. And you know, the, the revenue from the podcast it's not nothing. It's like three to five hundred dollars a month, right? And so, but I feel like, you know, we have around six thousand people listen to our podcast. Six thousand five hundred if you include audio and video. Sometimes it's seven thousand five hundred that listen to our podcast. If just a few people wanted to support us at like five bucks a piece, then we could easily get to our normal advertising revenue. We could remove all the ads and have it just be an ad-free show. But it doesn't matter. Like, you, no one would have to give any money at all. But it's just this idea I had. And Kevin says that people will hate it and they're going to get really mad and no one wants us to do that and blah, blah, blah. But I, I, I said, I don't think people want to have to pay for the content, but I don't think they'll get upset if there's an option to support the content on the podcast side. That's all. I was curious of your opinion. Like I had these funny ideas too, right? Like if you donate $5 a month, you know, we'll make a funny Photoshop of Kevin or something. I don't know, stupid stuff like that. Like nothing real substantial. Maybe you get your, your name at the end of the podcast in writing or something. Like maybe... You, you know, we could say your name on the show or something <laughs> like actually that'd be kind of a funny one, right? Like if you donate $10 a month, we'll just find a sneaky way to mention you every single episode. Like <laughs> that'd be kind of funny. I don't know. Let me know guys. Is it crazy? I, I just, I would like to not put ads. And I was, the reason I thought of this is because I was like setting up this week's podcast and I was in there like placing the ads. I'm like, man, I wish I didn't have to put ads on this show at all. If we could just get like a little support financially for the show, then, you know, we wouldn't have to do ads. But Kevin, Kevin's pushing back on it, which I think it's good. It's noble of him to not want to even give the option. Um, Carrie, you know, he's a sellout. He's like, yeah, let's do it. <laughs> Me, I'm torn. But yeah, I'd be interested in your opinion. Would that offend you if someone had a way to support them, but you didn't have to do it and nothing changes? Like there's no hidden episodes behind the paywall or anything like that. It's just an option for people who want to support. I don't know. Let me know in the comments. I could use your advice. Dr. Dre, the chronic CD sold. Tina listed this today, guys, and it sold for 14 bucks. So that's like a very rare, valuable CD. They're not often very valuable. And I think I even just randomly like pulled, like I pulled a couple of CDs out and I'm like, oh, I'm going to get the chronic. That's got to be worth something. And I end up being right. Every now and then I'm right. So I got a weird order from a viewer, by the way, Kato. <laughs> Kato ordered something and said, hey man, I love your vid videos. No matter what NC Picker might say, you're my favorite reseller to watch next to Harry Hurricane. So was he trying to order for someone else or is he joking? Cause I am the NC Picker. <laughs> I don't know, Kato. I might be missing your joke. Let me know. Man, I'm covering all the vulnerable topics today. The, the bodily functions, the not being as good as Harry Tornado, all these things, you know, Harry Tornado did comment on the last video, if you guys saw it, and he said on there, he said, I think I actually mentioned this, I did like five minutes ago, that he said he always gets everything scanned. And I responded and said, hey, I don't have time to get everything scanned because of my day job. And he said, well, just reach out to Whatnot, they might approve you for the instant payment thing, right? That's like, that's when you've made it, right? When Whatnot says, hey, you now can do instant payment. The way they do that is if you get approved for that, the minute you sell something, you just get paid. Right? Like right as soon as your auction ends, you get the money, which if they're doing that for people, they're really that big of a next step to just like, hey, it's been 30 days. No one's complained. They didn't get their items. Let's pay them out. Like it just feels like such an oversight that it can't be intentional. I would hope it's not intentional. I just, how do they not realize that? It just doesn't make any sense to me. I rewatched this recently. Wait, Jurassic Park, The Lost World. Yeah, this is the one I recently watched. Was this the second or the third? Second. I don't think this one was very good, honestly. Yeah, I didn't, well, I think I liked it. Th I can't remember, guys. I just watched this and I can't remember. Sold it for $4.96 plus shipping. A lot of sales though, right? It's going good. What time is it now? I'm like nervous because I got this whole uh, meeting tonight. I missed a call too. 336, what's that? I don't know that number. Let's call it. Thank you for calling us back. This is Claudia with the Vehicle Service Center. Anyways. <laughs> 
<laughs> it, it seemed like maybe it was a local number and ah, normally I would just ignore a call like that. <laughs> but it was just weird because she had the wrong car and stuff. And I was like, well, maybe this is about like a car that I have in another world. I don't know, guys. All right, so two more sales, but they're upstairs, I think. So let's head upstairs and we'll grab those. I think more NC piggies are coming, by the way. I've been working on that project, trying to get some more NC piggies. Maybe some more stickers, maybe a t-shirt someone had the idea of, that sort of stuff. Uh, so we'll see what happens. We'll see what happens. Hopefully I can make something come to light. All right, so I listed these two just the other day. Actually, I think I listed them yesterday. I did it, guys. I listed something. This little lion. Wait, that's not a lion. Tiger? Bear? Oh my. And this bat. These are both Imagine X. And I wish I had bought more, honestly. I was at a sale and I bought three. And when I looked them up, they were all worth like seven bucks a piece, which isn't a lot of money, but they're easy to find, super easy to list, and they sold right away. And I paid, what did I pay? Well, I paid, I got three, and I think I paid five bucks for three. So a little bit more than a buck a piece. Trash, trash podcast. Hi, guys. <laughs> Callie's in the house. You know, a lot of people saw you sneak behind me in yesterday's episode, Wait, where like you crawled behind the chair and you were like... <laughs> <laughs> they caught you. Dad didn't see me though. I saw you eventually, but they saw you. They're like, eh, I saw Kelly sneak behind you. All right, so let's see your new necklace. Oh, oh pretty. Ah, it's in the All right, Kelly, how much do you think this sold for? Uh, um, She's cheating. $5.10. $5 and then this one sold, so maybe it wasn't that good. I thought it sold for seven. Oh, this one sold for $7.20. And this one actually went to, uh, look, it's flying, Matthew. He said, my wife and I laugh as you jump all over place from thought to thought, keep up the great work. I can't help it. I do do that though, <laughs> do do. Okay, really quick, uh, before I leave, the percolator thingy, the Corningware percolator part that I sold, someone responded to yesterday's video and said that that actually is a Vero-ish item. Like you can't sell it anymore because it's got recalled. Now I don't know if that applies to all the parts. There might be some parts you can sell, but out of an abundance of caution, they say that at my work all the time, abundance of caution, uh, I decided to just take it down. Not worth the risk. So I took down all that Corningware stuff uh, based on your guys' feedback that I shouldn't be selling it. So, oh well. I actually, I will say this, that one item I sold paid back and made me a little profit on that. So no loss really, I got my money back and the rest of the pieces I'll just dispose of. All right, so my total sales were only like $254. Bettina has been consistently listing 300 a day for quite a few days now. So I think that's really good and that's gonna pay dividends here soon. Um, We'll see though, we'll see how it goes. All right guys, that's all I've got for today. Thank you so much for watching. We'll see you next time. Make sure you subscribe, hit the like button. Bye-bye.